everybody. Uh, we're so excited that you all are here with us. If you did not know, we've got a very special service for you all this morning. Uh, if you were at our Christmas cantata last year, you know how special this is, but we've prepared this presentation. Uh, our, our worship team's been working hard. It's called the Christmas cantata. Uh, we, we really hope that you're just encouraged and inspired by the music that we have for you and the narrations. And so we've got a, a great service planned. We love you all and enjoy the show. was the night before Christmas, and all through the earth, creation was stirring, awaiting his birth. The time for Messiah was certainly near. The prophets foretold it. The scripture was clear. Adore him, Christ, 
From the book of beginnings at the very first sin, God's word makes it known how his grace entered in. Born of a virgin, he would come as a man, the creator among us. The time was at hand. The first no.
in the east proved a marvelous thing, where wise men would journey to find the true king. Shepherds in Bethlehem gazed on the sky, on the wondrous splendor of Creator Most High. Yeah. 
How could they know that the very next night the angel of God would engulf them in light? For their Savior was born. It was news of great joy. Laid in a manger, they would find the dear boy. heavenly host would soon join to sing of the glory of God and peace he would bring. He entered creation. The word became flesh to show us his love and giving his best.
He's the prince of our peace. He's the one who makes whole. He is wisdom incarnate, the shepherd of souls. Love 
He's the author of life. He's the ruler of all. And he offers salvation to all who will call. The shepherds and wise men would bow to adore. Holy God among men, our greatest reward. to this king. Let all join in worship. Let every voice sing. Jesus is Lord, all creation proclaims. He's the first and the last. Forever, he's the same.
Everything changed on that first Christmas day. When God became a man in a most humble display. As we think of the manger in which he was laid, let our hearts welcome him to this world that he made. show or a presentation, but everything we do and everything that we're about as a church is about introducing people to Jesus. And so if you're here this morning, 
uh, I sincerely again hope that that maybe something that was said, something that was sung, one of the songs, something impacted you, something touched your life this morning. And if you're here and, and you've been far away from Christ, or maybe you've never accepted Christ into your life, I want to give you that opportunity here this morning. Because the truth is, this is the reason that we're here. This is why we celebrate Christmas. If, if maybe you don't know what Christmas is or you don't know why we celebrate it, but here's the truth. It's that God loved the world so much that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die for your sins. So Jesus Christ, he was born as a baby. He was laid in the manger. He lived a sinless life. He was crucified on a cross for your sins, for my sins. And he was buried in the grave and he rose again on the third day. And now anybody who puts their faith in that truth gets to spend an eternity in heaven with Christ. Listen, you're not alone. It may feel like you're alone. It's so easy, especially with this time of year when maybe your loved ones have passed away or, or maybe you don't get to spend time with your loved ones or maybe you do and you still just feel so alone. I wanna tell you, you're not alone. You're not. God loves you so much. He's with you. He's always with you. He's there for you. And he wants to spend uh, an eternity with you. He wants you to be in heaven with him. And so this morning, if you're here and you're considering turning back to Christ, maybe you've been far away and you wanna renew your faith in Christ, I wanna give you that opportunity. Or if you've never put your faith in Christ, I wanna give you that opportunity as well. So can I just have everyone bow your head, please? Now, if that's you and something this morning has spoken to you, something's tugging at your heart, then I wanna invite you just to raise your hand on the count of three. Again, maybe this is the very first time you've made this decision, and I wanna say it's the easiest decision you can ever make, but the most important decision you can ever make. Heaven's just one decision away, and all you gotta do is believe. And so if that's you here in here this morning, and you wanna put your faith in Christ, on the count of three, I'm just gonna invite you to raise your hand. Nobody's looking around. This is just a moment between you and God. One, two, three. I'm gonna ask you all just to re repeat this prayer after me because there, there are people in here who are making this decision. And so even if you've made this decision before, I'm gonna ask you just to say this prayer uh, with me because we are a family and we do this together. So please, can I just have everyone repeat after me? Father, thank you so much for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to die for my sins. Today I choose to put my faith in that truth. I believe that Jesus Christ came to this earth, that he was crucified on the cross for my sins, that he was buried in the grave, and that he rose again. God, thank you for your love and for your salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, can we just welcome some new people to our family this morning? Hey, we're seriously so glad that all of you are here. And if this is your first time, if this is your hundredth time, we consider you family if you consider you family. And so you're always welcome here. Thank you so much for being here. We love you all. And on that note, this Thursday is Christmas Eve. So we are having an incredibly special candlelight service at five o'clock on Thursday. Please, please, please make plans to be there. It's gonna be a powerful, incredible service. Bring your family, uh, bring your neighbors, invite anybody who you know who wants to be a part of this because this is a family event and we want you to be a part of it. It's gonna be so much fun. So again, that's Thursday at five o'clock. And then the last thing that I have for you this morning is I wanna give all of you the opportunity uh, to give because it is an opportunity. We love to give because of who we are, because God has given so much to us. I love that giving isn't an obligation. It's not something that we have to do. It's something that we get to do. And I, I'm so grateful that, especially with this season, especially with Christmas, when we're celebrating what God has given to us, we get to give to other people. Um, so there's a few ways you can give. You can give online through onecostchurch.com slash give, or you can download our app and click the give button. It's on the app store, super easy to find, One Cause Church. And if you have a check or a cash or an envelope, you can put that in the security box at the back of the room after service on your way out as well. 
in 1 Kings chapter 20, uh, there's some really cool stories. I love just some of the incredible, awesome stories that are in the Bible. I love discovering new truths. And in 1 Kings chapter 20, there's a story where the Syrians are trying to overtake the nation of Israel. Um, and this is God's people, the Syrians. They have their army. They're coming to try to overtake the army of God's people. And so they have their first battle, and it is on uh, the hills. They fight in the hills. And the people of Israel, they just completely obliterate the army of the Syrians. And the Syrians, they retreat, and they go back, and they reassemble, and they start trying to figure out why did the Israelites win. And they, they, they came to this truth. This was their thought, is they won because God is a God of the hills. And if we decide that we're going to go fight the Israelites in the plains, Surely their God won't fight for them there. So they decided to, that the second battle that they're going to go, they're going to go overtake the Israelites in the plains. Um, so they go and they fight the Israelites again and they lose really badly. They end up surrendering and it's not good for them. And it's such an interesting story for me because these Syrians, they thought that God was going to be different based on the different location or, or the different setting of the battle. And it's, it's a mindset that a lot of people have that God's going to be different in one season of my life versus another season of my life, that he's going to behave differently based on am I in the mountains or am I in the valleys? Have I made a mistake? Am I perfect? And, and people have that mindset that God's going to treat them differently based on where they're at in their life. But I want to tell you that it doesn't matter where you're at. You could be at the lowest place in your life. You could be at the lowest valley that you've ever been. You could be at rock bottom right now, but God is with you. And he's still fighting for you. And he's the same God in that situation that he is in, in church, that he is on the mountaintop, that he is when everything's good. God is good and he is always good and he is always fighting for you. And especially with just the, this whole giving mindset and this whole Christmas season, I, I want you all to know that, that God doesn't want you living in lack. He doesn't want you living in poverty. He wants to bless you so much. That's the very heart and the nature of God. And, and maybe you haven't known that. Maybe you've forgotten that. But realize this morning that God wants to bless you. He doesn't want you going through the season alone and, and broken and hurting. He wants to be with you. And so just I want to challenge you to invite him into your situation today to just reach out in faith and believe him and take him at his word and trust that he wants to bless you. And so if you have something to place in the offering, again, I want to encourage you to do so. We give because we get to. We give because God is always going to take care of us because he's given so much to us. And this is just a great time to give. And this is a great place to give to and a great ground to sow seed into. So I want to encourage you to do that. And I'm going to pray for all of you. Father, I thank you so much for this family that's here this morning. God, that they're givers because of, of how much you've given to us. God, I thank you that they're, we're all making the decision to give this morning. And so whatever they have to give, God, it doesn't matter. What matters is that they're giving, that they're stepping out in faith and they're trusting you. And so I thank you that you're just blessing them, that you're opening the floodgates of heaven into their lives, that this season, they're just gonna see breakthrough. They're gonna see prosperity. They're gonna see finances. They're gonna see increase. God, whatever they have need of, you are their source. And I thank you for providing that lack. We thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, again, please, please try to make it this Thursday if you can, if you're in town. Uh, it's going to be a great service. And if you're traveling or uh, maybe you're around family, I'm just going to say a prayer of blessing for your life. Um, I'm, I'm choosing to believe right now that God is going to take care of you this week, that there's going to be safety for you and your family, that whatever fear, whatever anxiety is going to be subsided because God is with you and he is your peace. And so before you all leave, I just want to bless you this morning. God, thank you so, so much for this this family again, God. Uh, I thank you that whatever they have going on this week, whatever journey they're taking, maybe they're traveling out of town, God, I thank you for safety. For wherever they go, whatever they do, safety, God. That whatever anxiety or uncertainty that they're facing, maybe in their family situation, maybe in maybe they're around elderly people in their family, God. But I thank you just for your supernatural protection to be on their lives, that no plague can come near their dwelling, God. No sickness can take a hold of their lives, God, because you, it's by you, Jesus stripes that they are healed. And I thank you that they're healed, they're safe, that God, you're with them, you're blessing them, and that your peace that passes all understanding will guard their heart and their minds every second of every day. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you all for being here again this morning. I hope you have a great day, and hopefully we'll see you Thursday. Y'all have a good one.
one quick announcement too, we do not have our prayer group today. So.